The second part of Unit 3 is logical operations, and just a warning up front, this does massively expand upon the AS 1.2 logical operations unit, so we are assuming that you will know that beforehand, and this playlist will build very much upon that topic knowledge. The first objective for this unit is to draw truth tables for Boolean expressions. Now we've done that before in the AS. All of the Boolean expressions that we've learnt about you should be able to do already. But the two new ones that we need to include are NAND and NOR gates. Chances are you've already encountered these in your AS. It's very, very common for your teacher to go over these at the same time because it's two more gates that make a bit more sense. However, let's have a look at what you should know. You should know the NOT gate. You should know the AND gate, the OR gate, and the XOR, or the exclusive OR gates. Now they all have their places, but let's have a look at what an AND gate looks like. There are some familiarities. It's an AND gate with a little circle on the end. That circle we've seen before in the NOT gate. So yes, you are right in thinking this NAND means NOT AND. So it's the same as having those two gates together. So the output is true as long as both the inputs are not true. So what does that look like in a truth table? Here's your standard truth table and take a look at the symbol used uh, for the NAND gate. We'll start on our first row where we've got A and B as inputs turned off and it gives us an ON signal. That's because both inputs are not true. The next row, both inputs are still not true. Only one of them is, so it still gives us a 1. The next line, only one of the inputs is true, so it still gives us a true signal. And finally, where both inputs are true, we get an OFF or ZERO signal coming out of the other end, because both the inputs are now true. A NOR gate, then, is very reminiscent of the previous one. It is an OR gate with a NOT part stuck on the end, so NOT OR. So it's given us the opposite output to an OR gate in many respects. It's true as long as both inputs are not false. So let's take a look at that truth table and again take a look at the symbol we're using to, diff to, to illustrate a NOR gate. Where both inputs A and B are turned off, giving us zero values, we get a positive, a one output. The rest of the table though is just off signals. The only time we get an on or true signal is where both of the inputs are not false. The second objective is to apply logical programming operations to combinations of conditions in programming, including clearing registers, masking, and encryption. Now let's have a quick look at what we mean by applying logical operators. You'd have, in this case, an 8-bit input value. You'd also be given an 8-bit key along with an operation, in this case NAND. And what you'd be expected to do is go through one at a time and identify what the operation of those two values and the NAND would result. So the NAND of 0 and 1 would give us 1 onto the next place. The NAND of 1 and 1 would give us 0. The NAND of 0 and 1 gives us 1. 1 again, 1 again, 1 again, and then two zeros at the end. So all we're doing is applying the logical operations in column form. And the result we get is our ciphertext, or the result. And we can use that to clear registers because the XOR operation, for instance, can be used to set an entire register back to zero very, very quickly. When you use the XOR operator with the same input and key, it always returns a full set of zeros as a result. So it's a very, very quick and easy operation to perform to set the entire value to zero without having to perform individual addressable changes. Masking then is where we want to identify only part of the byte. And in this case, in this question, if we wanted to identify the two most significant bits, what we do is we use an AND condition and we use a key where we have all zeros except where we want to identify what the bits in the input are. So you'll see here, because I want the two most significant bits, I'm putting one in the two leftmost places. When you apply and to the input and the key, it returns the value of the input only where the key is set to 1, and it sets the rest to 0. And this very easily allows us to identify areas of the original byte where we might want to look at a bit more detail at what the original values were. Encryption is another way of doing this, and I'll cover this once again in a past paper question on the Unit 4 specification, but 
we can use something like XOR to encrypt or decrypt the data. We have to have an input and we have to have a set key. The only downside is it's symmetric. So if you identify the key, you can get back from the result to the input. So we have to use the same key to encode and decode, making it slightly less secure than otherwise we'd want, but it works really well. It's a very simple operation. We take the input, we take the key and we XOR it and we get the result. Then if you take the result and you apply an XOR with the key again, you get the original values back. So it's a really nice way of encrypting and decrypting data reasonably simply. Our final objective is to simplify to Boolean expressions using Boolean identities, rules, and De Morgan's law. Now, De Morgan's law is very, very straightforward. It's that not A and B is the same as not A or not B. And then likewise, not A or B is the same as not A and not B. The easy way to remember De Morgan's law is that if you're switching between either forms, if you're switching from the conjoined version on the left-hand side, you're going to split and change the operator. If you're going right to left, you're going to merge and change the operator. It's a reasonably simple one to apply, and you would add that to the rest of your simplification laws. Let's take a look in this example here and how we would simplify it. Well, the first thing I'd look at is the consistent AND C. We can take that out and apply it to the not A or not B in the bracket. And the moment we've got that, you can see that we can apply De Morgan's law to that not A or not B in the bracket. And it becomes not A and B. Now, of course, you'll have to apply it in many, many more situations than that. But the best way to practice it is to jump into a bunch of questions.